Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the TP-Link Omada controller and how to migrate an existing one to another location. Now, this can either be an existing software installation to just another software installation on a different server, or it could be going from a controller running on a server to a dedicated piece of uh, hardware which that is actually what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be taking my existing TP-Link Omada controller, which is running as an application on a server, and I'm going to be taking that and putting it onto an Omada OC200 hardware controller. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, I did a first-time setup video for this piece of equipment, but really all it is is just kind of a tiny computer that runs a dedicated instance of the controller. So you don't have to worry about putting it on a desktop or a server and making sure it stays on 24 seven. It just runs on this little hardware box and just sips power and is on all the time. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to get our existing configuration onto this one. Now, obviously this is already uh, going to assume that you have a controller set up. It's already running a network. And of course you have another controller that's already set up. I'm not going to go through the steps on how to actually get a controller running. Uh, we're just going to take a look at how to move it. So I'm just going to browse to the IP address of my hardware controller, which is already set up and running. And I'm going to log in with what I set uh, my admin account to be, which is just admin and password 1234. And we're going to go ahead and log into this. And we can see that we only have one site configured here that is default, and it's got three APs. So in my other video I did where we set this up, we added three access points to our default site and set them with a wireless uh, network and all of that. So this is the hardware controller that we're going to be moving to. Let's go ahead and log into my existing controller, which is running on a server. And this one is located at 10.8.8.8.189 and port 8043. So when you have a non-hardware controller, it's running on port 8043 for the management. So we have to specify that in our address bar. All right, and log in. And we can see here I have two um, sites set up. One of them is called December and the other called Apartments. Now Apartments, uh, let's just go ahead and delete that one because that's not doing anything and it's actually for a future video. So pretend you didn't see it. So what we want to do is get this site or pretty much any of the sites. Um, I guess if the apartment site would have had equipment or any setup, we could also migrate that one. But what we want to do is pretty much make sure that these two controllers are on the same firmware. So let's go ahead and just check our controller version here. So let's go to settings and under system settings, we can see our controller December Omada is on controller version 5931. And if we go over to our hardware controller and also go into settings, we can see our controller version is 5.129. So our existing controller is on an older version than our new one. So we should be good to just migrate and we'll go to the Omada software center and we'll select uh, software controller version five. And if we scroll down, we should have a download option maybe, or maybe not. Uh, thanks TV link. Anyways, <laughs> let's, uh, Oh, right. Here's download the latest software controller. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. And if we want to look at the upgrade instructions, here are the controller upgrade instructions. And this is pretty useful, especially if you're coming from a very old version. Now, both of mine are already on version five, but if for some reason your controller is like way older, you can see release 3.1 or 1.2 for the hardware controller. Um, if you are at least on these versions, then we can go ahead and do that migration. Um, Cause you can see down below, if you're currently using a version earlier, then release uh, 314, then you first need to upgrade to one of the releases that are listed and then follow the procedures. So if you are running a much older version of the controller, you do need to bring it up to at least one of these versions before you can really do the migration to a current controller. But anyways, both of ours are on release five, so we are good on that front. Let's go ahead and go over to the download tab. And if we scroll down, we should see the versions to download. So here we've got Looks like uh, version 5.13.22, um, which interesting enough is actually newer than the uh, version on the hardware controller. Now I know there is a, a little bit of a minor difference between 
the hardware controller and software controller versions. Now, what we need to do is at least get our software version in the ballpark. So the one we're coming from is 5.9.31, and the one we're going to is 5.12.9. So what we need to do is at least get our software version to 5.12 for what we're coming from. So if we tried to do it with controller version 5.9, it's not going to work. The first, basically the two numbers have to match. This third one doesn't really matter, but these first two do have to be the same. And what that is, is there's the firmware major version and minor version. And if we go to import this site to the new controller and the major and minor versions don't match, then it's going to tell you uh, no, basically. So we're going to go ahead and download the closest firmware we can get, which is that uh, 5.12. We definitely don't want our existing controller to be newer, trying to go into an older version on the new one. So let's download this 5.12. And now this video just became a how to update an Omada controller video. Surprise. So let's open our downloads folder and extract this uh, zip archive. So let's go ahead, um, extract files and make sure all the files are here. So this Omada controller is the file we're concerned with, and this is what we're going to want to run. However, we can't really run it from this PC because the one I'm on right now is not the computer that's actually hosting this controller. So what we need to do is log into that computer and run this file. So however you want to do that, if you want to transfer it over to the network, put it on a USB flash drive, whatever, you could just log into your other computer, download the file and run it right away. But I am just going to transfer this because in my situation, my existing controller is not on this computer. So I'm just transferring this to a file share that I have set up and then log in to the computer that actually is hosting it. So here we can see we have the Omada application running and it's version 5.9.31. So what we want to do is actually exit this. Now we will lose access to our controller uh, for this part of the process. So let's go ahead, exit out, and then find that file that we just moved over and run the Omada controller.exe file. And all this is going to do is basically be the exact same process you did when you set up your controller for the first time. Uh, the only difference is it's going to upgrade it to the newest version instead of installing it from scratch. So when the box pops up, we're just going to hit next. And it says a previous controller version has been detected. So, yep, you're strongly recommended to back up configurations before upgrading. Yes, you really should. In this instance, I already have a backup because mine does automatically. But for completion's sake, let's uh, go ahead and take a backup just in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to click no to cancel the actual installation. I'm going to start up our Omada controller again and wait for the controller to start again. And then I'm going to browse right back uh, to it to log in again and take that back up. And once we are back into our controller, we're going to go to settings in the bottom left and the maintenance tab. So right here is our backup section. We can either take settings only, which is going to get you everything that you already have, your configurations and everything needed to be working. The only thing it won't get you is any historical data. So like connected clients, your experience scores, or anything that goes back in time is just going to leave out. So if you don't care about that, you can just select settings only. But if you do want all of the data that this uh, controller had, you can select all time. Now we're only migrating this site to a new controller. So really none of this is going to come with us anyway. So I'm going to select settings only, and we're going to export that to a local file. And the reason we do this is just because when we do this update, if for some reason everything goes sideways, something crashes, we can't access our controller anymore. At least we have this file, which has been blocked again. So let's go ahead and download unverified file. Uh, this is just going to make sure that we can restore our controller in the event something goes terribly wrong. So if we needed to, we would spin up a brand new controller and just do this import section from a local file and use that file to get it back. But anyways, now that we have our backup, let's go ahead and exit the controller again and rerun uh, that installer, which is just omonicontroller.exe. And it's going to plop us right back into this installer window where we can just hit next. And then when it says, do you have a backup? Now we can say yes, because we have a backup. Again, not required, but it's a great idea to actually have that backup before proceeding. 
And then here we're just going to let it do its thing and upgrade from 5.9.31 to 5.12.7. All right, and once that's complete, which for me took about five minutes, um, we're going to go ahead and click finish and leave start the controller after installation checked. And that should pop up the same Amata controller box, except this time it's got the new version. So let's just wait for this to start, uh, do any database upgrades that it needs to do, and then we'll be able to log into it and start this migration. And here is what I was talking about. It did have to upgrade the database and then it just threw us back into the controller. But anyways, this process, even after um, we started it up, this again took about five minutes to complete, getting through the database starting and upgrading the database. So at this point, since our upgraded controller is back up and running, we can go and log back into it again and then actually export this site. So what we want to do is from our global organization view, we want to go to the settings in the bottom left and then go to migration. And here is where we have our two different options, site and controller. Um, going through the recording of this uh, video, I don't remember if I already went over this or not because there was a lot of stuff I had to cut out. But anyways, if you want to do a one-to-one -one controller migration, you would select this. This brings over your global settings as well as all of your sites. But for our purposes, we just want to use the site migration because we're just going to export this one site and put it on a new controller. So let's go ahead and click start for site migration. And we're going to select the site we want, which December is the only one we have. So that's what we're going to select. And then we're going to keep export to local file checked. And then once we hit the export button, that's going to download our site export file. And once that's complete, all we really have to do is just upload it to the new controller and then get all the devices moved over. So here is our file. Again, it says it was unverified, so it blocked it. Download unverified file. Let's just go to our downloads folder and make sure that that actually went in there and it looks like it did site backup December and the date. So let's go back to our controller, uh, previous controller that we're migrating. And it says to migrate the site, import it to your target controller. And you do that by going to dashboard site list and then import. So going over to our new controller, the hardware controller, let's go to the dashboard, make sure you're under organization global, not under any of your sites. And here in the site list, we have the button import site. So we're going to go ahead and click that and we get to name it. Now, since there isn't a name overlap, um, I'm just going to leave the name the same. And what I mean by a name overlap is on this new controller, we have a site called default. If you don't rename your site, it's probably already going to be called default. So if we're migrating a site over that has the same name, this here just gives us the option to rename that so there isn't like two sites with the same name. But I'm going to keep mine, which was called December, because that doesn't overlap anything. And we'll keep this checkbox enabled for retain device info and then import from local file and go ahead and browse to the file we just downloaded. So site backup, double click that, and then we can click import. And here is that warning that I've already said before for versions four, three and above. Only the file from a controller with the same major and minor version number can be imported. So that's the reason we had to upgrade our previous controller up to version 5.12 because this site backup file wouldn't come in here any other way. So let's go ahead and click import and we can see that window went away. It said it succeeded and we now have December in our site list. And it says that there are uh, three access points in this site already which is true, but none of them are online. So if we click on our site December, we can go in and basically just verify that everything looks like it used to. So if we go to devices, we should have all of our previous devices, which for me was barn, living room wall and office. Now they're in the disconnected state because they're still communicating with the IP address of the old controller. So we have the new site information in our new controller, but our devices are still tied to the old one at this point. So what we got to do is go back to our old controller, confirm that we imported the migration file, and then we get to actually migrate the devices. And what this does is it updates the inform address for each of these. And if you're familiar with your inform address, that is just a line of configuration in these devices that says, hey, this is the IP of the controller who is managing you. And this migration wizard just does that for you. You get to select all your devices and it'll automatically push that line to all the devices saying, hey, go to this other controller instead. 
So we're going to leave everything checked and we're going to select migrate devices. And oh, actually it says controller. Oh yeah, of course, duh, I'm kind of an idiot. We have to put in the controller IP or the inform URL. So our new controller's IP, if we go back to it, um, under the global settings area, go into settings, system settings, we can see the IP of this controller is da, 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 scroll down 10.88.13.106. So that is what we are going to put in here. 10.88.13.106. We'll go ahead and migrate devices. So at this point, they are disconnected from the old controller. They are in the status of migrating. And if we go over to the new one, switch our view from global down to December, our new site, then we should see them start coming online. So back to the devices section, uh, we can see, yep, here they are connected, configuring and connected. Now, one thing to note, which is very specific to my configuration is that all of these APs have a different um, network address than our controller. So you can see our controller is 13.106 and our APs are 88.89. That is because I have a management network, which is on a separate VLAN. So if you have a setup like this, make sure that the necessary ports are allowed through the firewall. Make sure that whatever network your access points are on can actually communicate with the network that your controller is on. Now that's a little bit more of an advanced scenario, but since these are intended for business, that's probably not that uncommon. Um, but if they're all on the same network in your home, you don't got to worry about that. Um, they should all be able to communicate just fine. But at this point, all of our devices have moved over to the new controller. You can see they're still in migration status over here, but we have the option to forget devices. And I like to do that just to make sure that this controller isn't going to try and manage these devices again. So once we have forgotten them, we are done. And I do not like to hit this button until I have confirmed that they show up in the new controller because you still have the option to cancel the migration. Um, for some reason, if they don't show up in the new one, you hit the cancel button and it'll change it back to the uh, old controller IP. But now in our old controller, we have absolutely uh, nothing in the form of devices. And you can see when we go to our site list, we still have the December site, but there's no switches and there's no EAPs. It still says there's wireless users for some reason, but that's just a stale uh, thing there. Um, but at this point, we can just turn off this controller and uninstall it from the computer that's currently on. I'll go ahead and exit out of that tab. And we can now manage everything from this one hardware controller instead of having to mess with that server. And that is how you migrate an Omada controller. It is a little bit more involved than, say, a Ubiquiti controller, because I know, at least with Unified controllers, you can go from a wide range of versions up to a newer one. So, like, in the Unify world, if we were running nine or 5.9 on the old controller and 5.12 on the new one, there's probably not going to be an issue with just exporting from the old and importing to the new. Now, there is a cutoff somewhere in Unify, but it's a much larger window than having to be on the same major and minor software version to complete the migration. But overall, I think it is pretty painless. And like I said, in, in this video, we went from a software controller to a hardware controller. You don't have to be going between two different platforms. You can go from software to software, hardware to software, uh, whatever. The migration process is still the same. You want them to both be on the same firmware version or at least the same uh, major and minor version. And then you can export the site, import it to the new one. And I think I've gone on probably long enough. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, happy networking.